Time for Wellness Wednesday, brought to you by Elevate Women's Health Center in Port Perry and chiropractor Shauna Dingman, Port Perry's only chiropractic and functional health care center focused on women, children, and babies. Don't let health concerns hold you back. Dr. Shauna Dingman, chiropractor and functional health care practitioner since 2000. And it is time for Wellness Wednesday. Today, we are going to be joined by Dr. Shauna Dingman from Elevate Women's Health and Scott Campbell from Okami Kai. So today we are going to be talking about sun prevention and sunscreen. You know, should we be wearing it? How long should we be out in the sun? What's going on? So please join me in welcoming to the show Shauna from Elevate Women's Health. Welcome, Shauna. Good morning. Good morning. I'm so glad to be here. I it's a great day to talk about this. No kidding. No kidding. Because there is some misconception with, you know, if the sun is blaring and shining versus when it is overcast. But before we get into that, welcome to the show, Scott. Thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, Taylor. It's Shauna. How are you guys? Great. I am doing well. You know, it's nice to be in the chair for Dan Pollard. My first little technical blip happened at the beginning of this interview here but that's okay things happen i'm just glad that i'm able to connect with you guys pretty good if it's wednesday and this is your first technical play nice job right right all of a sudden (laughs) i think the computer just got overwhelmed because the sun it's hot and it thought hey let me just freeze for a second and see what happens maybe i can cool it down before i talk to them i don't know it got very excited it did it's, I don't know. Personally, I'm glad you're in the chair instead of Dan, too, but I, I know Dan might be listening, so I'm just going to keep that down to one comment. Yeah. Love you, Dan. <laughs> yeah, love you, Dan. Yeah, yeah. I just spoke to him. He's really enjoying his vacation, and he's been soaking up a little bit of the sun that has been out and about. So I think the number one question on everyone's mind is, is sun exposure actually good for us? Definitely. I mean, you know, I think the thing we have to remember is that We live on an earth that is powered by the sun. We're living organisms. We are designed to have sun and our bodies are designed for this too. We have things in our body. We have this melatonin, which is that dark pigment, the tan that comes up. So we we are designed to have sun exposure. And let's not forget that sun helps us create vitamin D in our bodies. And as far as I'm concerned, vitamin D is probably the, I hate to single out one vitamin because they're all important, but I think vitamin D is one of the most important vitamins that we should be aware of and making sure that we have healthy levels of. And the sun is one way that we can actually, it's the only way we can create vitamin D. So it's important, but like anything, you have to do sun wisely. And I heard, and this is a rumor, I don't know if it's true, maybe you can clarify it, but you only need something like five minutes out in the sun to get your maximum vitamin D for that day? Yeah, it's quick. I was going to say anywhere between five and 15 minutes. So, you know, if we sort of average it out to 10 minutes, that is what they say. We do have to remember though that, um, how do I say this? When we create vitamin D, it becomes cumulative. So if you're taking vitamin D as a supplement, the more you take, the more it builds up over time. And it's the same, the same is true with sun exposure. Unfortunately, we live in such a high part of the earth that, I really think Canadians can only use sun effectively to create vitamin D for a very short amount of time, really in the those months where the sun is high, high in the sky. So we're really only talking about maybe three months of the year. So, you know, on one hand, the more you can have during the summer, the more it accumulates in your body and will last you into the fall. But that being said, we have to be very wise about what this does to our skin and what this does to our body. So I think there is a fear of the sun. We, we have created the fear of the sun. You know, um, you know, as soon as kids go outside, parents are slathering sunscreen on them. And I, I think that it's a good idea to make sure that we are not damaging our skin. And that's a really important thing, but it's very individual. You know, you said um, after the news, when you were introducing the segment, you said that you've got a nice tan right now. And I'm someone who tans very easily too, but Um, you know, my daughter, for example, she burns quite easily. So everybody's a little bit different in what their bodies can tolerate as far as what I would, you know, I'm sort of saying this in air quotes, a safe level of sun. And so the first thing I would say when it comes to enjoying slash protecting yourself from the sun is 
we have to be mindful about it and we have to choose very wisely. So if you're someone who burns with a minute or two minutes of sun, you need to have sunblock for sure. You do not want to burn your skin. Um, that being said, if you're someone who can stay out all afternoon in the sun and never burn, you have a different tolerance for the sun. With the whole chemicals in the sunscreen versus how much time you should be in the sun for, let's say, maximum vitamin D exposure, where's the balance? How do we know what sunscreen to wear if we are those people that do happen to burn within 20 minutes of being outside? Yeah, that's a great question. So there's this whole big I don't even know if it's a debate right now, but <clears throat> excuse me. There's I call them sunscreens versus sunblocks because there are two different products that are being offered right now. There's the traditional sunscreen, which has chemicals like um, avobenzone, octanoxate, oxybenzone, and those are being shown by the FDA to actually be potentially very toxic and very damaging to us on a whole different health level over time. My question has always been, I don't know if you remember, they used to have these commercials that would say it uh, protects you from the damaging rays of the sun. And so my question was always, well, if they absorb the damaging rays of the sun, what do they do with it? Like, how, how, does, how do those chemicals dissipate the damage from those rays as opposed to sunblocks? So if you remember back when you'd see these old, you know, if you look at the Elvis movies from the 50s and people would have this, these big white zinc noses, that's sunblock. So it's using titanium dioxide or zinc oxide to um, big, literally block the sun. Now, we've come a long way with sunblocks now. You don't put those sunblocks on and have a completely white face, white nose, but it does leave your skin looking whiter. So the question is, what is better, a sunscreen or a sunblock? And what I always tell my patients is, again, you have to know what your sun tolerance is, but anytime you can do something that is more natural and has the least amount of side effects or no side effects, ideally, that's always what you want to choose. And I feel that the sunblocks, those mineral sunblocks are always going to be your better bet. That being said, uh, you know, we were out, we were at the cottage on the weekend. We were out with kids on the boat all afternoon. We boated down through the locks to a local restaurant, sat out on a patio, had lunch, took our time boating back, went off the jumping rock. So we were out for hours in the sun. That's a potential time where even with sunblock, some of us in the boat would have burnt and that's where they've chosen the higher levels, the 80, 90, 100 level sunscreen, because in the end, in that kind of a case, I would say that burning is worse than using sunscreen. Is your skin sort of a meter, like we're going back to your vitamin D comment, like, would that be the way that I would interpret whether I've got enough vitamin D for the day is whether I'm tanning or is that totally a separate thing? That's a good question. I don't know the answer to that. I've never, I've never really thought about it that way. Um, I, I don't think, so. and actually now that I'm thinking it out, I don't think so because if you think of somebody who has more melatonin in their skin, somebody of Mediterranean descent, or just somebody who just tans really easily, where you can literally spend hours out in the sun. I think that they're probably manufacturing a lot more vitamin D than somebody who can only spend five minutes out in the sun and therefore they burn. Like, I don't think it, the amount of time that you can spend in the sun before you burn, you don't necessarily generate the same amount of vitamin D. Does that make sense what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Is it possible I could get too much vitamin D in my system? You can. I don't think you can do that from the sun, but I think you can damage your skin too much from too much sun exposure. No, people. so people can get too much vitamin D. It's a fat-soluble vitamin, so you do have to watch your levels of vitamin D, but typically we only see people getting too much vitamin D when they're supplementing too high with it. And when it comes to days like today where... There's clouds in the sky, can be kind of overcast. We've got those sunny breaks. You know, every time I'm out on the boat and it's overcast like this, someone says to me, oh, you better watch yourself. This is the day you're going to get burnt because that sun is sneaking through the clouds. Is that actually a thing? Are we more at risk on days like today than we are when the sun is really shining? Cloud sun. So sun does get through cloud cover for sure. And that's where it's good to look at the UV index um, because the UV index will tell you, even though it's cloudy, how much of those UVA, UVB rays are getting through the clouds. So yes, there is potential, but again, 
it depends on how much cloud cover and how much of a burner are you. So here's sort of the, the levels of how we kind of think through sun safety in our family. So the first thing is just thinking simply about wearing protective clothing. It, it honestly is great protection for your skin. Um, you know, a nice light cotton or linen, well, I don't use linen because it wrinkles and I don't <laughs> iron, but a nice light cotton long sleeve shirt, something that is really breathable and isn't, it doesn't, it's not hot. It's not going to make you hot. Um, and a nice light pair of long pants. So my husband likes to wear uh, scrubbed pants when he goes out in the boat, for example. Um, we always try and wear caps, baseball caps or hats of some kind, um, especially, you know, if you're a guy and your hair is maybe starting to thin, protecting the top of your head is really important. So making sure that you have a hat with as wide a brim as you can get is really good. Um, like I said, wearing protective clothing, makeup, a lot of makeup for ladies has a, a sunblock in it, usually up to an SPF of eight. So in the summertime, I always put on sunblock on my, the backs of my hands and on my face. So when I'm getting ready in the morning and I put my moisturizer on, I always put on a sunblock. So I have a mineral-based SPF 30 sunblock that I have from the health food store that is actually tinted, so it doesn't give you that kind of white look to it. Okay. I put that on the backs of my hands and on my face because that's where the skin is the thinnest and most likely to damage. Then on top of that, I use a mineral powder sunscreen, um, sorry, foundation. And that in itself has a sunblock of eight. And I've been told that they actually, they accumulate on each other. So it's kind of like wearing a 30 plus an eight to give you a 38, which I don't know if that's true, but I figure I wear foundation anyways. So I might as well wear something that has, it actually has zinc in the actual base of the foundation and it's a powder. So that works really well. And so use the things that are that are right there and available and are really easy to do. So on a day like today where it's pretty overcast right now, that's probably all I would use. But again, I don't burn. I can be in the sun for a long, long time and really not change color very much. So on a day like today, I wouldn't worry about more. But somebody like my daughter or my sister probably smart to wear an SPF of eight because you can still, if you're out for any length of time and you burn, you can still burn through cloud cover for sure. And I think you've opened up the avenue for an interesting topic of sunscreen and makeup because is the yeah. tinted moisturizer with SPF eight at the drugstore using mineral sunscreen within their product? Or is this something that's exclusive to health food stores and you have to actively go out and search for that type of mineral-based sunscreen within makeup. Perhaps we found a flaw in the makeup industry we should be exploring. Well, that's a great question. And I know that the, the mineral powder foundation that I have, I just bought it at Shoppers. So there are lots of lines of makeup that include a mineral-based sunblock in their liquid and um, powder foundations for sure. But you can also get the, the chemical kind. So again, you have to be choosy. You have to be mindful about what you're doing and think about the choices that you're making and what you want to be putting on your skin. You know, the, we have to remember the skin is an organ. It breathes. And anything you put on your skin can potentially be absorbed into your blood and cross the blood brain barrier. So do you want to be putting those harmful chemicals into your blood to circulate around all the organs that are keeping you alive and keeping you vital and healthy. There may be times where it's worth it, but I would say most of the time, whatever you can do to be as minimalist and as healthy as possible with the fewest potential side effects, those are always, th those decisions accumulate all through your life over time and they help to give you the health that you have right now. So if you're happy with the level of health you have right now, awesome. Keep doing those things. But if you feel like there's some tweaks or some improvements that you can make, this may be one very simple thing that you've just never really thought of. Absolutely. So I think the bottom line to this whole conversation is embrace the sun, enjoy the sun, but protect yourself appropriately, whether that be you're only out for 15 minutes absorbing that vitamin D, you're using a mineral-based sunscreen or you're layering up and covering yourself up so that way you're minimizing your exposure. Absolutely. Yep. You nailed it. And now 
You know, Shauna, for people that maybe don't necessarily know what you do on a daily basis or aren't familiar with your business, can you kind of give us a synopsis of what you do, what your passion is, and how you're helping people live their most healthiest life? Sure. I'm a chiropractor. I've been a chiropractor for 21 years now. Uh, I'm a mother. I have a husband and three kids. We live right here in Port Perry, and my office is in right in downtown Port Perry. And as a chiropractor, what I do is basically make sure that people's spines are in their proper alignment, that the structure of their spine is as healthy as possible so that their brain and their body can communicate as freely as it possibly can, because that's the way we can be the healthiest. So our tagline in our office is helping women and children live happy, healthy lives. We focus on the care of women and children. That's always been my passion. I feel like there are lots of doctors and chiropractors out there that see everybody and so I I feel like women's health is complicated and sometimes I think it just takes a woman to really understand what women go through and being almost 50 I'm turning 50 this year I feel like I've gone through a lot in my life so I understand and my own health journeys have really helped me help my patients so that's what we do that's what we're passionate about my husband is also there so he sees the guys okay uh, Yeah, we do really focus on the care of women and children and babies. Now, I have one chiropractic question for you, and I guess it's more of a comment. My biggest fear with chiropractors is the cracking of my neck. (laughs) I'm always terrified that something's going to go sideways and I'm going to live the rest of my life paralyzed or something like that. Is that a misconception? How rare is that? You know, what's the situation? Gosh, I think you're fear is a really common one, especially among women. So we use very gentle techniques. So some people, they love that technique and it works great for them. And we can do that for sure. But my go-to for women is always gentler techniques that don't involve that cracking. As far as, you know, would it paralyze you? I, I can't imagine that that would be the case. They, even though it sounds loud because it's right there in your neck next to your ears, they're actually very minuscule movements of the joints. And that cracking that you hear, it's just gas releasing from the joint capsule. Just like when you open up a pop can, it makes that popping sound. Right. It's the same kind of thing. So I think it sounds scarier than it really is, but the relief and really the restoration of mobility in the joint is far more beneficial than that, uh, you know, the, the, the scariness of the popping sound that you get from the joints. Okay, good to know. I think I'm definitely going to have to take a trip over to visit you in Port awesome. Perry. Th- <laughs> thank you so much for joining me today, Shauna and Scott. I very much appreciate you participating in Wellness Wednesday on Dan's week off. And I look forward to chatting to you guys again sometime soon. This Sounds is good. Thanks you so know. much, Taylor. I, I you know, just learned so much. And, and like, Shauna, your comment about, you know, if you feel healthy, then, you know, go ahead, do what you're doing now, and then make tweaks if you need to. I think everybody can make tweaks for sure in anything. And uh, me personally, I'm going to keep on wearing my hat, but I don't think I'm going to do the foundation thing. I think I'm going to stay away from wearing foundation. Come on. (laughs) Mineral foundation's where it's at. I I could do it on the phone, I guess. Nobody would say anything, but I think once I go to Zayers or something, there there might be some comments. But, uh, yeah. I'm also blown away by the fact that I've even got gas in my neck. Yes. <laughs> oh, I'm still leaving that one alone, Scott. I'm yeah, thanks. Not go there. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us, and we'll catch up with you guys again soon. Thanks, thanks Shana. Taylor. Thanks, Have Taylor. a great week. Have a great